What's up everybody, Leet Nintendo Gamer here, and welcome to the second episode of the Elite Nintendo Gamer official podcast, Elite Talks. And in the last episode, we talked about Super Metroid, and I beat it! I beat Super Metroid! From what, from what I remember, it is the first Metroid game that I've ever beaten, and I liked it. I liked it a lot. Like, I, I really did. I really... I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the exploration a lot. I think the atmosphere is, it's very, it's its very interesting for a, like a Super NES game. Like how a Super NES game was able to portray such a, a very immersive atmosphere. Like, like it's like an alien world, but it's pretty easy to kind of find yourself lost in it. You know, it's very interesting. So, today's topic is going to be Luigi's Mansion! I remember last episode I mentioned I wanted to do a Luigi's Mansion episode, and it's October today. Today is October 2nd at the time of this recording. I don't know. I don't know when it's gonna go up. I think it's gonna go up, like, next week. Cause, you know, I gotta edit it, I gotta put in the music, I gotta put the- I gotta edit the thumbnail and the- the little picture that goes into the the video. So let's go ahead and start talking about Luigi's Mansion. The port that is going to be coming out on the 12th. I am very, I'm very excited for that port because I never played the original Luigi's Mansion. I, I just, I always wanted it. Like I've been watching Let's Plays and stuff like that since a long time ago and I always wanted to play Luigi's Mansion but I never had a GameCube. I had a Wii. I had a Wii. I don't know if... I don't quite remember if I knew the Wii could do GameCube backwards compatibility even though it said GameCube when you booted up a game. Like when the little disc spun around there was a GameCube disc and I <laughs> I, I realized that a little later on, but the original Luigi's Mansion was always a game that I just really wanted to play, but I, I never could. So now there's an opportunity for me to play the original Luigi's Mansion, and I am so, so excited for that opportunity. But I wanted to take the time to kind of give like a review of Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon and my impressions of Luigi's Mansion 3, which, of course, I am super excited for. So let's go ahead and start talking about Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon was released... What was it? It was about... Maybe 2013? Yeah, I think it was 2013. For the Nintendo 3DS. And I played it. I really liked it, but in retrospect, I realized that it could have been much better, and I feel like while I was playing it, I was having fun, and, but it wasn't like real fun, if you know what I'm trying to say. Like there were a few missions in there that were a ton of fun, but in, in retrospect, there were quite a few missions that just were not uh, particularly fun. Like every single toad mission like you had to carry the toad on your poltergust and like whenever you try to open up a door it, it wouldn't let you go through because you needed toad oh my goodness those those whoo there's like <laughs> there's always like one mission per mansion i think there might have been like two per mansion or like one for every like other mansion like i don't, I don't even remember but they were always so annoying, and the polter pup missions, like they they were annoying too. Because whenever you grab the key, he would like go away, and it would just uh, I didn't I wasn't a big fan of that. But I don't like the gameplay itself. Like Luigi walking through this mansion, that was a lot of fun. But I noticed that. The mansions were not as dark as the ones in the original game. 
like the ones in the original game were a lot like more serious like actual like actual fear like it wasn't like you know kitty not really like kitty but more cartoony atmosphere with luigi walking through this like like a mansion that looks like it would appear in the mario universe but in the original luigi's mansion it looked like an actual mansion like somebody would probably live here or you know probably multiple people because there i'm pretty sure there were there were multiple bedrooms and like a few kitchens and a few like i think there was like a like a training room i feel like there'd be more than one person living in that mansion but but it was it was really interesting how the old Luigi's Mansion tried to be more more serious. Now that kind of brings me into my conversation about Luigi's Mansion 3. I think Luigi's Mansion 3 could be something amazing. And I came up with this idea a little a little earlier where Luigi's Mansion could take a page out of Metroid and turn it into a amazing like adventure game. While, while still keeping the mission structure of Dark Moon, but making it, like, you know, fun. Or fun. Or more fun than Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. So, I was thinking that you could spawn, like, spawn. You know, like, maybe, since it looks kind of like a hotel, I'm assuming you would, like, use an elevator to travel. And the... I was thinking, like, the, like, the missions could be... Like, you know, you, like a floor, like a floor. That could be a mission. Like how Luigi's Mansion, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon has the, like the, each of the, each of the rooms as puzzles. You know, this was really apparent in like the, the old clockworks where you would have to like, I don't know, like pull a, pull a, like use your poltergust to make like clock hands move and that would open up a door. You know, stuff like that. And you could put that in there, and you could use it to progress in, like, a room. You could have some rooms that are puzzles, and some rooms, like the original Luigi's Mansion, where you would have to suck up all the ghosts, and the lights would come back on, and, like, a key would spawn. Like, one of the ghosts could be holding a key. So, I was thinking that could be a good idea. Or, you could have a mission structure but be able to go off the beaten path, like in, let's say, like Metroid Fusion, where you could go off the beaten path and see something, like what was, a good example is like Ridley in like cryogenic storage, like, you know, why, why is that there, you know? And nobody would have figured that out if you hadn't have like explored. And I feel like Luigi's Mansion, like didn't Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon have a little something similar to that? Like in the first mansion, I think it was actually like the second mission of the first mansion. You spawned in the little, you got pixelated into the, like the lobby area of the gloomy manor. And there are rooms to the left and right. If I'm not mistaken, you could explore those rooms and get some treasure. But I don't think it was anything like noteworthy. You know, the game was telling you, you, this is where you need to go, and if you don't go there, you know, you won't make progress. And I don't, I don't think that's how Luigi's Mansion 3 needs to be. But, you know, the Switch is a home console hybrid. But I've noticed that the home console quality of the games has been Nintendo's main focus. You know, there aren't games with, like, a bajillion save points and a mission structure. Like, technically, Breath of the Wild had a much more organic mission structure in the form of, like, quests, and the Skyrim port on Switch had that same quality, with, like, a quest list. And Super Mario Odyssey had, like, like little bite-sized moons. But I, I really like how it can both be a home console experience and a handheld experience. Like, it doesn't really take away from any of them. Like how in Mario Odyssey, you can just save wherever, and in Breath of the Wild, you can save wherever. You know, I really think that saving anywhere can be really good. But as I was saying with Luigi's Mansion 3, you could have, like, exploration, and you can do the, 
the mission structure. And then once you make it to the next floor, you know, maybe keep floors kind of small, like maybe one or two rooms to preserve that home console experience. I mean, the, the handheld experience, but have like a whole bunch of floors. They like have like many, many floors. Like I saw in the reveal trailer, there were, there were like rooms going up into like 500. Like, you know, maybe they can have like 25 rooms, not like rooms, like room rooms, like hotel rooms, but like rooms that you had to clear out Maybe have like 15, like, rooms? I don't, actually, I, I have no idea where I'm going with this. There, there's probably not gonna be 500 explorable rooms in Luigi's Mansion 3. I was talking about home console and handheld experiences, but I think my floor idea could work. Like, they could like kinda chop up the game into a whole bunch of like bite-sized pieces you know, have like floors, and then when you beat a floor, you move on to the next one. And in between there, you save and, you know, like refresh, I guess, like Luigi's HP or something, and move on to the next next level. And I don't, I don't know, it just kind of feels like a good idea. And, you know, have like exploration, you know, find more treasure, you know, maybe like have some collectibles, like the Mario not like souvenirs, but like Mario items from Luigi's Mansion 1. And, you know, maybe have like the golden bones from Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. And I want treasure to still like mean something. Like in Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon and Luigi's Mansion. Like I want treasure to have a pretty big purpose. Uh, you know, maybe expand the poltergust to have have like a skill tree, have like a poltergeist skill tree where, you know, you can like boost the suction power, like ghost HP is drained faster and have like a, like a plunger, like the little plunger launch attack, you know, have it charge up faster, or like the cooldown time be less or, you know, power up your strobe bulb, you know, make your strobe bulb have a, like a longer, longer radius. You know, stuff like that. You know, that'd be really cool. And if you have a whole bunch of floors, it'll encourage people to... Encourage the players to explore and get more treasure. So they can upgrade their gear and just get better. And that's really satisfying when there's a lot of, like, progression in that sense. Like, you know, buying things. You know, like just knowing that your character is getting stronger. And I, I just, that feeling's really good, you know, like in Metroid, whenever you pick up a brand new item, it just feels great. You know, you're just, you're just getting that much more powerful, you know, getting ready to use your new skill and just, you know, explore the world in different ways. But I don't think Luigi's Mansion could, could really do that. It isn't really an exploration game. It's more of an action adventure. Like, you know, exploring the mansion, but the action being in, you know, sucking up the ghosts, which is kind of the main focus. So, yeah, that's about, <laughs> that's, we're, we're coming to a sudden close here, but, you know, that's about all I have to say about Luigi's Mansion. I mean, I'm sure I could go on forever talking about Luigi's Mansion, but I'm just, I'm really hyped for the port. And I might talk about the port in a later episode of the podcast. So this has been Elite Nintendo Gamer. See you guys later. Peace.